Great, so we're recording. This is Heaven on Earth. Welcome to the Mother Ranch. I am Kate Nelligan. These are our incredible little boy goats that are out here today, and we are just going to be with the goats because of some weather. So we're going to start with a meditation, and the theme for today is on transitions and change. And that has been a personal journey of mine this week because of a lot of things happening. And uh, it also came in this first thing this morning to talk about change. Um, and it's interesting that we are in a change location for this. Normally I'd be out in pasture with the horses. Um, and also that we are with the boy goats who had a lot of change this week too. So I will get into kind of all of that after the meditation. But the, I guess, intention of the meditation is that we open ourselves up through it to become more flexible, more adaptable, more resilient through change, and really just in tune to our own needs and our own process as we go through change. So there's a lot in that. Uh, just embracing of the fact that life is change, that change is inevitable. And certainly through, we've gone through globally over the last couple of months, we are all in a lot of change. And so the, uh, what the horses shared yesterday actually is really relevant. And they said to be grounded through our feet and then to be loving and open through our hearts. And so I was doing a meditation with the lead Mary yesterday uh, and sweetness of a new donkey and um, sweetness was grounding me like with his body up against my legs and rain, the lean mare was just standing like with her heart and nose kind of positioned towards me. And I was just like, feeling into that expansive energy of love. And it was really neat to actually bridge them, right? And that in many ways is heaven on earth, bridging the grounding of earth, being supported, being on this huge rotating rock and to be fully open and connected to our higher selves and to love, um, to the higher power, which is my opinion, simply love, hence me wearing my shirt today. Um, and so that, so the horses are really great at bridging those two energies of being grounded and being in love, right? Being the energy of love. Um, and that's actually something that Winter, one of the horses said to me the other day too, when I was asking him about this transition that I'm going through. And I said, how can this get easier? And he said, just be love. So those were really nice little snippets. So I think the intention is, can we get into a grounded loving place so that change and transitions are easier. Um, we just hit a new moon. And so there's the, the, and it's in Gemini. So there's the energy of both, how do you feel really open and expansive and also really like structured and grounded at the same time, right? Um, the two different things coming together. So enjoy these little babies and we will, there's mo they're mostly babies out here. You've got two, uh, one-year-olds and then the babies are a couple months old um, and they have a ram in with them who you might be able to see in this background over here um, so yeah let's uh the boys have a different a different energy than than the girl goats do which you know similar to us right <laughs> all right let's uh let's dive into the meditation make sure you guys can hear me okay if you'd like to kind of wiggle your toes inside of your shoes and drop down, feeling your full feet becoming a heavier, more connected to the earth. And noticing some tree branches dropping down from your feet all the way down into the center of the earth. Dropping those branches down and wrapping around the core of the earth, allowing your whole lower half to become stronger, heavier. Now dropping a huge tree trunk from your sit bones down through that chair. 
all the way down into the earth. And taking a deep breath, letting it go. And taking another deep breath and letting it go. Breathing in peace and breathing out love. Now picturing a golden sun above your head, dropping that sunlight down through the top of your head, all the way down through every cell in your body. Allowing the sunlight to wash away any tension. Maybe bringing that sunlight directly to places that feel tense and just allowing the sunlight to live there. And then allowing the sunlight to really also be dripping down and filling your heart with just golden light energy. And as your heart becomes full with that, allowing your heart to extend that golden light energy out 360 degrees around. Allowing your heart to be like a radiant sun. Blasting everything in your room with light. Blasting everything in your town with light. Blasting your state, your country, and the world. And now just inviting in the quality of curiosity. Maybe inviting in the energy of goat medicine, that playfulness, that curiousness. Inviting the quality into your heart and into your body. I'm seeing Checking in, how curious are you already about life? How much do you explore new things? How do you hold question marks around change, new possibilities? You embrace new possibilities with interest. And with wondering what's in it for you, what gifts are in this new exploration for you? So allowing the energy of curiosity to just fill your whole body and allowing that to 
create some open spaces in your body. <sighs> Maybe putting your hands on your stomach and allowing that area to open, expand. The capacity for more versus constriction. Just inviting in curiosity into your stomach. Now maybe placing your hand on your heart and inviting in curiosity to your heart. Allowing it to expand your heart area. And now maybe your hands on your throat. And allowing curiosity to expand this center of expression. And then maybe on the top of your head and just placing your hands there and inviting in the energy of curiosity to expand and open your crown. And then just taking a moment to kind of relax into where you're seated and inviting in the energy of relaxation. And so relaxing your jaw. Relaxing your throat. Relaxing the area above and beyond and behind your ears. Relaxing the top of your head. And you can just say to these areas, relax. Or you can say it's safe to relax. Now moving down to your shoulders and your back and asking this area to relax. Bringing in the curiosity. Oh, I thought we had a goat that wanted to jump. <laughs> ah, inviting in that expansion, the curiosity, and the relaxation energy now all together in your heart area. And just seeing how when you create the combination of relaxation and curiosity in your heart space that things lighten, get a little easier. The stress just kind of falls away. <sighs> now moving down into your stomach, your sit bones, your lower back allowing this area to also just relax. And then dropping down through your legs, 
Down to your feet. Allowing not to get more and more relaxed. I'm just sending any part of your body that might feel a little tension still, just sending that area the word love. Maybe it's your forehead, your temples. Maybe it's part of your back. Just send that part love. Allowing your body to soften in that space and then allowing that softness to travel to the rest of your body. And then your energy field two feet outside of your body, allowing that softness, that love energy to just pop outside of your body as well. Maybe if there's any animals in your house, allowing it to land, that softness and love to land on that animal. And now allowing it to land on any humans in your space that may need some of this universal love, some of your softness, be any humans that need that. Ah. And then we're just going to do a little bit of clearing. So you can say yes after I say what we're going to clear if you're open to clearing it. But the first thing is clearing resistance to change, like the energy of fighting change. So anywhere in your body or your mind, in your consciousness, We'd like to clear any resistance to change, any of that fighting change energy we'd like to. And you may yawn or you see me yawning and it's just the energy of clearing the system, kind of breaking up the old staticky energy uh, any of the like residual block type energy. And so we're going to clear now anything where we feel like we know the way or we know the answers, which keeps us out of that open hearted curiosity. So anything. That's blocking our open hearted curiosity, anything that makes us stay in the ego mind of knowing or needing to know or thinking we already know everything. We'd like to okay to share that. Any and all judgments against ourselves or misunderstandings where we feel like we're not adaptable or we're not flexible or we're not resilient, we'd like to unclean and destroy that. Oh. 
And then any and all fear of change, like just this fear, fear that we need things to stay the same. We have Velvet Kiss helping us with this now. <laughs> He's telling us to play more. <laughs> oh, and the rain is, the rain is, the rain is beginning. So we'll clear the fear of change in a second. Perfect timing. You can see them all running. So we're gonna have a little bit of a little bit of some noise here. Let me move this one more time. You're gonna hear the rain, unfortunately. Just do this last clearing and then move into the sharing. We may end a little early if it gets a little too loud for you all. Um, you can see we're in here now. <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm, internet's going down too. Um, all right, let's see. How's the internet? Thumbs up if I'm still okay. Yeah. Did I freeze? No, I'm good. Okay, let's see. All right, so let's see how this goes with the internet. It should be fine, but the weather changes some things. So let me give you guys the babies here. All right, so let's just clear the fear of change. Um, if you're open to it, so any and all ways that we fear change, um, that we fear transitions, we'd like to uncreate and destroy that. Oh, nice. That was a really nice one. All right. So, you want to come up? boys are getting so big they can't even necessarily sit on us so sorry we came out of meditation a little bit abruptly there um i always like to ease out but i think you might all be back <coughs> there's our ram friend um so let's jump into the wisdom share and then i think we may even have time to, to chat if you guys want especially since it's a smaller group if you feel open to it um and no worries if you don't but um, just chatting about change and transition and, you know, what I've learned from the critters is that change and transition is something that they experience on a daily basis because the weather changes, um, their moods change, their food can look or feel a little different, and they are consciously aware of change as a natural state of life and a natural state of being and so there's really this energy where they don't make stories out of it um but i know a lot of us as humans that we do that we create stories out of that something is different and usually we have preferences about whether we like that or not and so we're consciously in this place of um, examining or judging, and that's what really kind of sticks us, is when we get into the place of judging change, um, are coming from a place where we're trying to control it so that things don't change too much, right? And meanwhile, 
our spirit, our soul, our higher self might actually be really seeking the change. Um, and so there's a way to hold change as it being um, like from the goat's perspective about curiosity. And, you know, horses can adapt and change pretty quickly, but they, they are creatures, they're stable creatures for a reason. They like consistency. Um, whereas what I find about goats is they're like constantly loving new explorations. You got this guy jumping up on this right here. And they're in this place of exploration, right? Like life for them is a big playground. And so what if we could start to think about life as a playground? What if we looked at it that way? What if we were able to go out and, you know, even a simple chair right now is like causing them total interest, right? They're, and, and they're like playing on it and jumping in it. And like, I'm not usually spending time with them because I have girl goats. You can see them play a little bit here. Um, I have girl goats, so I'm not always in with the boy goats. And so there's really, um, like, for me being in here, that's a ch big change for them. And, you know, me doing Heaven on Earth is in here is a change. Let's see this guy playing here. And they're really, like, they're hams. Like, they're very, like, one of them is underneath right now, the seat, which has never really happened before. And he's just pushing into my sit bones, right? Really in that place of, like, can you get more grounded? Um, but, you know, they can make anything fun. And so that's one of the things I really love about goats. But what if we could do that too, right? What if there was fun and change? If we held it from that place of curiosity, what's here for me? What can I explore? This is an adventure. And um, I wish you guys could see this little one right here. He's like under the chair. <laughs> you can kind of see him. Um, I just want to make sure he's not stuck. What are you doing? Did you get stuck? So that's what's so interesting, right? Is sometimes we think, he did get stuck. All right, you're okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. All right, so nothing happens by mistake in this work. So we're going to clear any stuck energy because I think there may be some. We just set you free, little one. <laughs> see if you can see him. His, um, his name is Ring, and he's got these incredible little rings on his, uh, on his foot. You can kind of see his foot there. Go bud. He's got a ring around his foot. So um, he is one of the goats that's staying here. And uh, he's going to be used for breeding. So, or not, I hate the word used, but he's going to be a breeding goat and um, make some cute babies. Let me see if you guys can see him a little better. There we go. <laughs> so he, um, what's interesting is three of the goat, three of the boy goats, which is actually a significant amount percentage of their herd, were sold this week. In fact, just a couple days ago. So they, these guys are in a lot of their own transition because they lost three of their best friends to somewhere else. And so, you know, um, but what's so interesting is I don't see them sitting around moping and creating a lot of stories on it. Did they, did they grieve? Are they wondering what happened? Probably. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure that they have there's times when they're like, oh, I miss being able to do X with, you know, that person. But they're really still in this kind of place of, of just being who they are, right? You can kind of see how they just, they're just themselves. They're just kind of taking life in the present moment as it is. There's a ring. You can see his, his uh, little rings on him. <laughs> And they're going to play here in a second, looks like. So, you know, I know it's not, you know, I'm not trying to necessarily compare humans and, and goats in the sense we're very different species and creatures. So there isn't necessarily that comparison piece. But what I really do believe is that they are um, so adaptable. And there's so much that we can learn from them on how adaptable they are. And in moments where we are feeling that stuckness, that we can invite in you know, the energy of the goats for how can I see this with more playfulness, right? What, what is possible here? How could I be, how can I adapt a little bit? 
How can I get curious? And just invite in the energy of the goats to that stuckness, to that challenge that you might be going through um, and to that transition. I end up coaching a lot of women on transitions. A lot of them are divorce or relationship transitions um, or work transitions, right? Whether they're becoming an entrepreneur for the first time or they just got promoted and they're stepping into more leadership and they need support around that. But there's really, um, I feel like in many ways, you know, it's surprising to me that I do a lot of change management type work being a double, you know, Capricorn and very much grounded in the sense of I need to have, have stability. I'm a little bit more like the horse where I like the consistency. But the, f the thing is, is that the change is really an exciting time because um, something is, has to die off for some new rebirth to happen, right? And so that is, in many ways, the energy that we're in right now. And a lot of us don't necessarily get to pick exactly what's going to die off, right? There will be companies that um, don't make it, maybe brands and companies that we liked and we didn't want to disappear. Um, but through that, there's new openings and new things that are coming. So for me in my own journey, you know, I had to, the entertainment side of me, the side that was always working in entertainment had to die off for the animal and the critter side and the horses to really emerge and become more powerful. And I loved entertainment and there was a part of me that didn't want that to end, but um, it had to. And uh, when I look back now, there's no regrets on it. And so if you want to, you know, to consider, you know, for the journaling, what has changed in your life that maybe at first you didn't really, you weren't too thrilled about, but then it, in the end, it became this necessity that was such a blessing and such a path for you, right? And, you know, having lived in three different states and moving and transitioning that way, you know, there's... There's transitions that we ourselves lead, right? For me, it's like I moved to Colorado, but there's transitions that we don't always lead, which are like getting getting fired from a job or being let go, which is happening to a lot of people right now. And having gone through that before as well, so many lessons in that, right? And me, I loved my job in New York City and I really did not want it to end, but it ended and it created the opening for me to move to California, which created the opening for me to have really my own spiritual awakening and do the horse work. So all of these things are stepping stones, right? And so if we hold it as I'm on a stepping stone right now, maybe the bigger rock where I'm going to land on and stay longer is coming. That's exciting, but to be okay with where we're in in the stepping stone and, and self cocooning in this time of COVID is very much that we're in a stepping stone where we don't necessarily know what this next big rock is that we're going to land on. Um, but we can start to consciously create where we want to go um, and influence it by our ways of being right now, right? By our curiosity of what's going to happen. And there's a lot of uncertainty and there's more unrest now than probably even just a week ago from what I'm seeing and feeling. And that can be really scary to a lot of people. But what if we could hold that chaotic time and that uncertain time as a time to get curious about like what's going to happen in the sense of trusting that it's for the highest good, allowing ourselves to be okay with not knowing and embracing that stuff's going to change no matter what, whether we like it or not. Um, you know, these guys didn't have any influence on whether their best, a couple of their best friends were going to be leaving. And yet, um, you know, they're, they're still here and they've got, these other goats had a new purpose. They went somewhere to graze on um, field and they're just going to have a lifetime of just being goats. And um, what was interesting is the, the woman who owns them here was talking a little bit about how at certain places in life we can have energetic dead weight. And, you know, I would hate to think of any animals as ever being that, but here there's a lot of critters. And for a new being to come, which there is, there's a new horse here, um, more info on that later. Um, but there, you know, there's, um, there is, hi, sweetie, yes, hi. This is Chip, everyone. Um, <laughs> he's actually Godiva's half-brother. Godiva's my critter. Um, 
clearly very very extroverted and also a bit bit like her likes is likes to talk did you have something you wanted to share with everyone yes what is it oh he's just pointed to my shirt the love shirt <laughs> yes i know you want my hair too you can't have my hair um so there's the energy of yeah can we bring love to the fact that there are parts of us that are a little scared oh my god he's like cuddling what are you doing um that are a little scared to go through this that are unscared of the unrest that are unscared of what could possibly happen and yet the you know the fear of it doesn't help us know what's going to happen right and I, I did really appreciate when, you know, Julia, who's here with these, with these quotes, she said, you know, for new exciting things to come in, sometimes we do have to be willing to drop the, that dead weight, right? That energetic, like these goats were just here hanging out without really any purpose and really anything to do. And so they got to go somewhere where they have a clear purpose, a clear job, and um, they're really wanted and now another goat can come in and help do some breeding and we had a horse come who also left an area where she was not fully on purpose and now she is and so being here coming here she's she has um a new purpose so you know part of what i think a lot of these endings and new beginnings is and the robin's been around a lot lately which is the sign of new beginnings is to embrace that you know change is happening whether we want it to or not um you know to lift off the dead weight that like this chair that was over the goat before to literally lift it off so that you cannot be stuck anymore and not feel stuck because this goat was stuck under this chair that's also a nice metaphor to really think about like what energetic chairs do you need to lift off yourself through love right so that way you're not stuck anymore so if you're open to clearing any energetics of stuckness in your life, you can say yes, and we'll do that. So anything that feels stuck in any of our lives or in any of our relationships, in any, um, any of our homes, anything that feels like it's more lower vibration stuck energy where we can't move or we feel trapped or we feel like there's some heavy weight on top of us, we like to agree to destroy that. So what I got on that is there's energies around how we're seeing things. That maybe that we're not seeing things through the truth, through the eyes of love, that maybe we're seeing things through the eyes of resistance um and wanting things to stay the same and i don't know about you but like i want things to change desperately because i feel like the old way and the old system and many of the major systems like education healthcare, on and on government on and on we're not fully working and there there is a way they can work and so sometimes the old has to be has to literally die so the new can be born that whole cycle of death and rebirth that's happening right now um, but there still was a part of me that's like, but I still want to just do the old stuff where like I could just go to the coffee shop and I could just go to the bar and I could just, and so, you know, to think that I need that or to not be willing to let go of that is, it's like, where are we in this energy of like fully surrendering and trusting that whatever is emerging is truly for the highest good and to that through that process there may be some chaos and there's going to be some change but to embrace it right to allow it really the caterpillar becoming the butterfly energy that if you've been following the self cocooning stuff i've been doing and been talking about so let's um let's just clear the way we've been seeing it because i'm feeling all this like eye pressure all of a sudden so all any and all ways that we've been seeing things incorrectly we haven't been seeing the truth I don't even have to say it, it already started to clear. Um, any and all ways that we've been seeing things through fear or through frustration or any old energies, rather than through love, we'd like to uncreate and destroy the faulty viewpoints. <sighs> Oof. Yeah. A lot of that is kind of opening. Ah, all right. 
That moved, definitely. That moved. That's great. So, um, awesome. I'm excited about all that movement that just happened. Um, you know, with these clearings, you may or may not feel things. I feel a lot when I'm doing them. I know and trust they work. I've seen results a gazillion times. But drink some water and really take care of yourself today because um, they are working on like deep energetic levels. They, the way I do the clearing, you can't hear me fully say it because I'm actually yawning and saying it, is there's a statement I'm saying that's actually pulling the thread out from the root cause. So it will, it's working with all of us. But, you know, I just want to applaud you guys for showing up because as you do this work, everyone around you benefits. As you clear, everyone around you you know, clears in this whole energetic. And if we take responsibility to do it and we do it, the world just gets better. So not everyone's gonna do this work. I'm okay with that because I know that not everyone is, you know, um, a goat here. There are some rams, right? <laughs> and he's like, this is his first time seeing a, like a laptop. So he's like, that's interesting, Kate. Um, so, you know, just, you know, be who you are, do the work if you want to do the work, don't do it if you don't. Um, but ultimately, I applaud those who show up and are willing to do this work, that are willing to clear and stand for the higher truth, which is really that only love is real. So it is not going to be the easiest thing to do a dance party in the rain here. <laughs> Um, so what I'm wondering instead is if we want to, if anyone wants to do any sharing, um, because I feel like we have a small group and we can, and I'm going to not record that part. Um, uh, but I'm going to end this recording. It's kind of peace, unchanged, and transition. Just give me one second.